Alrighty, alrighty, good evening everybody, good evening, good evening, and welcome to our Natural Living uh, series. Uh, I apologize for last week, I know that last week we didn't have one of these, and uh, I'm really, I really missed it, I'm really glad that we're able to come back and have this this week. Um, I do have a couple of updates for you guys as well, uh, so uh, not, not as much as I would like, but I do have some updates. Um, I am getting a better web, a better camera so that this thing is no longer going to be bugging me like crazy, but I'm also, uh, but the camera is also going to be for, uh, beyond just, uh, webcam. It's also going to actually allow me to take video outside as well. So I'm going to be able to do some outside videos and things like that. So I can do some recording on that side too. So I might do some herb gathering videos, I might do some uh, preparation videos, things like that. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, uh, that being said, I'm looking forward to this. Today, we are looking at a sense of adventure. This is such an important topic, uh, one that is sometimes talked about, but not really talked about. Um, certainly not talked about much in the Christian community, and it's talked about uh, very much, uh, it's, it's talked about a little bit more in the natural health community. Um, so, very much. Uh, thank you, Marcy. Uh, yes, it is fantastic. I'm really, really pleased. Um, I'm grateful that God has allowed me to do that. I've also picked up a new instrument, so you might see that once I learn how to play it. Um, it is a more difficult instrument, a very skilled instrument to learn, so I'm looking forward to being able to learn some of it and also to, uh, uh, to be able to finally perform it eventually. Um, so, yes, I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be a fantastic thing. I'm really praising God that I'm going to be able to do this, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to put more content out in the future. That being said, of course, uh, we are focusing today on a sense of adventure. Uh, this is a very, very important topic, and I hope that you guys are ready, because this is something you might hear some stuff that you go, wow, I never thought about that before, or hmm, that's new, never heard that. So I'm really, really hoping that you guys stick around till the end. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, anything like that, please feel free to, or comments or anything, uh, please feel free to leave them in the chat, and I will, uh, I'll see that. You can interact with me. This is an interactive stream, and there goes the camera. This is one of the reasons why I'm getting a new one. Um, I apologize for that. <sighs> Sorry. However, uh, we are not going to let this stop us. We will keep right on going. So let me just go ahead and uh, do this. There we go. Alrighty. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, open up with a word of prayer. And we will dive right on in. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you so much for your love, your compassion, and for everything that you have done. Lord, we just ask that you would please be with us now. I ask that, uh, that you would please lay your hand on the technology, uh, that this would work. And I ask as well that you would please uh, open our hearts to you and uh, that you would help us to understand you in a more complete way. Please speak, Lord, and please bring people who need to hear whatever it is that uh, you have to say. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Alrighty, once again I apologize. I'm going to move this to a different USB port because that seems to be the problem. So, uh, that being said, anyway, we are talking today about a sense of adventure. Uh, if you don't know what adventure is or why it's important, then it's important to... Um, and then it's really significant here that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it's really important that we know how to do this. If you if you have not seen uh, me before, if you haven't seen anything, I am the King's Bard. Uh, you can find me on f uh, on Facebook, YouTube, and also on Twitch. Uh, so please do pick me up for that. I apologize. I am kind of stalling for time. I am trying to get my. Uh, my webcam working again. Oh my, that was loud. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Alrighty. Let's dive on in. 
Okay. So first off, what is a sense of adventure? Why is adventure so important? Uh, that is the question, and it is an important one at that. It is a very important question. And so it's really, really important that we uh, answer that question. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. Sorry about this, guys. My webcam is not doing well. I have one ordered. It should be here by Wednesday. So, uh, I'm sorry about this. So, what is a sense of adventure? Why is it important? Why do we need a sense of adventure? Well, adventure is super important. Uh, uh, but it's ultimately a, a sense of adventure is a desire for novelty, risk, reward, and discovery. There's a lot that goes into adventure. There's a lot that goes into um into all sorts of these things. And so a, a sense of adventure is super important for us. And uh, it's really, really important for us to recognize the importance of adventure. Sorry, I'm blowing into the USB port to try see if that'll fix anything. Uh, at any rate... Oh, no, it's not recognizing it at all. Okay. I may have to do this without a uh, without a camera. I'm hoping not, but we shall see. Hmm. This is this is frustrating. Alrighty. Yeah, something is wrong with this device. Okay, then. I, I really don't know what's going on with this. Um, at any rate. Uh, so, a sense of adventure is really a desire for novelty, risk, reward, and discovery. All these are part of uh, adventure. And uh, it's, it's really, really important for us to recognize that. However... Uh, there are a few things that, well, uh, there's a lot of, uh, how shall I say, um, our society tends to frown on adventure, tends to frown on things, and at the same time idealizing it. We idealize it in our movies, in our pop culture, we idealize it in our books, uh, in video games and things like that, but at the same time when anybody has a sense of adventure uh, within our society, uh, in action, you know, in real life, we kind of put it down. We say, oh, no, that's, you know, yeah, well, you know, it's it's not real. We don't need to worry about that. No, you got to just do what, you, you know, just stick with what's real. Stick with this. Stick with that, right? Stick with how things are. Stick with the status quo. And a sense of adventure is not actually a bad thing. One of my favorite book series of all time uh, is uh, the book series Redwall. And uh, one of its, you know, it's it's not a Christian book series, and I don't read it anymore. Uh, but one of its things that I really, really, really do like about it uh, is the fact that it cultivates a sense of adventure while at the same time, uh, it it doesn't discourage it, but at the same time it point, you know, it, it in fact, it encourages the sense of adventure, but also encourages the, uh, at the same time, the staying at home side of things and you know it, it takes both sides and says hey look they're both good uh, and in fact you know when you're done it's time to come home and you know what you know that's that's good so it's really uh, adventure is not a bad thing um, unlike what our culture will tell you if you try and go off and have an adventure it's not an inherently bad thing um, however it is often co-opted by movies, video games, fantasy games, other substitutes. Um, and what I mean by co-opted is that this desire for adventure, this sense for adventure, uh, is often... Uh, there. It's The desire for it is often substituted 
with these things. So, oh, you want adventure? All right, hey, watch this movie. Oh, you want adventure? Hey, play this video game. Read this book. Uh, do this thing. Because, oh, you know, you can't really have adventures in real life anymore. I mean, according to who, right? Um, re real life is often seen as just kind of this, you know, this mundane thing that is just kind of, eh, you know, it's, it's just kind of there. There's nothing really interesting about it. And so, ah, well, if you want to really have adventure, okay, you know, if you really want to scratch that itch, eh, go and substitute it for one of these things because you can't have it in real life. This is the, the narrative that's pushed. This is the, the idea that's out there, the, the cultural concept that we have. And it's absolutely wrong. Uh, unfortunately, if this sense of adventure, if this desire is not fulfilled, it can cause withdrawal from the real world and dis dissatisfaction with everyday life. Um, this is big, I know, because this is something that I experienced. Um, it's very, very unfortunate, and it's very, very important for us to recognize that this is a real thing, that we do need this. Uh, men more so than women, typically, but it is something that women also want. There's, you know, but it, it's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, my personal perspective, everyone has a sense of adventure, and everyone is born with a sense of adventure. It just doesn't always manifest in the same way. Just like everybody is born an artist. Have you ever, you know, what kid doesn't like to draw, you know, like, you go to kindergarten, you go to preschool, things like that, even first grade, second grade, most kids are drawing, most kids love to, to play music, to dance, now, I didn't like to dance, to draw, yeah, to draw, I like to draw, uh, I liked, I liked music, dancing, eh, no, not really, I still don't like that, but, um, yeah, I, that's not my thing. But drawing and, and dancing and, you know, other artistic forms, this is something that everybody has within them, right? The reason that people think, ah, oh, well, I can't draw or, oh, I can't play music or, oh, I can't do this or that artistic thing is because they're told they can't. I, you know, maybe not by teachers, maybe not by adults, maybe by parents, maybe, or maybe by siblings or friends um, or maybe they tell themselves that after looking at what everyone else is doing and they say, ah, well, you know, I can't do this. Well, actually, well, it's true that most people won't have a talent, you know, like every talent for art. Everyone has at least one. And if you tell people, oh, well, you can't draw or you can't do this or you can't do that, they're never going to work on it and they're going to end up with having skills of something that, you know, was a long time ago and you know, as far as they're, you know, they should have greater skills and they don't. It's a shame, but it's part of our culture. And unfortunately, what this we do the same thing with adventure. We are all born with an innate sense of desire for discovery, a desire for something new, a desire to take risks, a desire to, to take those risks for getting rewards. This is something that especially is true of men, but it is also true of women. Um, and this is something that's very, very important for us to recognize because if we ignore it, if we put it down, if we try and dismiss it, it can cause withdrawal from the real world or dissatisfaction with everyday life. This is exactly why video games, movies, and other substitutes for this are so popular and why addictions for these things are on the rise, or at least a major reason why. Because we say, ah, well, we tell everyone, ah, well, adventure is for, you know, for those places. You want to have adventure, that's where you go for it. You can't have adventure in the real world anymore. And while that you know, while the, certainly the kind of adventures that are in movies and video games and things like that, yes, you can't really have those adventures. I mean, where are the dragons, right? That, you know, you can't really fight dragons or do, you know, anything of, you know, those other natures. You can't, like, go on, you know, you don't really go on epic quests or anything like that anymore. You know, even in earlier times, you didn't necessarily do that either. So... But there were places to explore. There were, you know, there were things to do and things like that. At least that's the that's the idea that's sold. Ah, well, you know, you don't have to do that anymore. Or you can't do that anymore because ah, well, you know, where you can't explore, you can't discover. Well, says who? You know, it's that's that's not true. And unfortunately, 
because we tell people that it's, you know, that this is not the, you know, that you can't do it anymore, we get dissatisfied because we have a desire to do this. And so we will tend to withdraw. We will tend to pull away from the real world or, or just get bored with everyday life. And we'll just kind of maybe get into our own world, get into a, a world of fantasy in the video games or movies or whatever it might be. Uh, and we just kind of end up thinking about, ah, well, I wish I could have this. I wish I could have that. Ah, you know, I wish I could do this. Or I wish I could be with someone like this. And we, we tend to uh, uh, fantasize and build castles in the sky. And it just doesn't, it's not good. We can't do that. Um, it's re you know, we need adventure. Uh, and we need it for, for real. <laughs> We need it to be in the real world. So, why is this sense of adventure so important anyway? You know, sure, you know, we all have one, but why is it important? Why does it cause so many problems if it's left unfulfilled? Well, adventure and discovery are born into all of us. Um, I mean, you think about it, what's the number one thing that kids do when they find something new that they may not have ever seen before? They stick it in their mouths, right? Why? They want to experience it. Their brains are trying to figure out the way the world works. They're trying to figure out what's going on and uh, just everything else. And that sense of discovery and wonder is still very much there uh, throughout the childhood. And as you get older and older, that kind of tends to go away as you learn more and more. And you just go, you know what? Uh, I've got most things covered. And you don't. But we think we do. And so, and this is a product of our culture that is so very separated from the world and from, from reality, really. Um, you know, we're separated from needs to a huge degree. Uh, we're separated from nature to probably the largest degree you can get. We're separated from the real world. We really are. We don't have diseases the way the rest of the world does. We don't have sicknesses. We don't have weaknesses. We don't have, um, we don't have hunger and famine the way that other places do. We don't have uh, the constant reliance upon God that other places do. At least we don't feel like we do, because we're not. You know, we're not the ones out farming the soil. We're not the ones. You know, live. You know, scratching out a living. You know, we're the ones. You know, we go down to the supermarket if we need food. You know, someone else grows our food and we bring it in. And our abundance has caused us to be separated from our true nature. Um, and it's really important for us to recognize that this is a problem. As we uh, now, adventure often fades from us, um, either because we just don't have enough you know, enough time or energy, or just you know we get focused on other things, right? Uh, or it's actively discouraged in us. Now, this could be something that is actively discouraged in our school systems, in our um, in our with our friends, with our family. It could be all of that, or it might not be. Uh, but ultimately what we do, you know, ultimately either way, the sense of adventure and discovery is born into all of us. And of course, even as we get older and older and older, and as we pass from our youth and young adulthood into kind of middle age and, and beyond, adventure kind, our desire for adventure kind of tones down because, well, you know, we just don't have the energy for it anymore. It's not the stage of life we're in. So adventure isn't always for everybody, right? But adventure and discovery is something that is very much there, and we do need to keep it cultivated. Uh, now, the Bible actually tells us a bit more about why this is the case. Uh, the Bible tells us we were actually created to explore. And if you don't believe me, you can check out Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, where God tells Adam and Eve, Go, fill the earth, subdue it. Right? Fill the earth and subdue it. How are you going to fill the earth if you're staying in one place, right? You've got to go out and you've got to explore. We were created and given the command to explore. We, as human beings, have the desire to get out, to spread out, to explore. Now, some cultures do this more than others. I happen to, you know, my ancestry comes from a culture that very much did that, probably partly because they didn't have a whole lot of land in the first place. Uh, I'm of Dutch heritage, so... 
Uh, maritime travel is one of the big things. And of course, my family actually started, uh, well, the history of my family really begins with a young man who ran away from home when he was 19 years old uh, to I climbed on a ship, became a cabin boy, and sailed off you know, to Malacca in uh, Malaysia. And, uh, yeah, my family just kind of have been traveling ever since. Um, and it's very, very important for us to remember that. Uh, and, it, you know, that travel is important to me. Adventure is important. It's in my blood probably more than a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that everybody, that, you know, that um, it's rare or that it's not in everybody, right? We were all created with this desire to explore, to spread out, to fill the earth, and to subdue it. We have this desire, uh, and it's part of what we were created to do. Not everyone is going to have what you might think of as a conventional adventure, if conventional adventures are, you know, if you, an adventure can be conventional, right? Um, I suppose I could say, you know, what we would think of colloquially or, um, you know, just in general, what we think of an adventure, right? We think of some maybe big fancy trip or a, you know, maybe some kind of adrenaline thing um, or, you know, something like that. We think of those things, but that's not actually really what an adventure is all the time. Not everyone's going to have that, but that doesn't mean that what we have aren't adventures, and everyone needs adventure from time to time. Everyone needs adventure. Everyone. Now, what is an adventure? Because we've been talking an awful lot about kind of a sense of adventure and how important that is and how it's in everyone. But what is an adventure? Like, what is it really? You know, what, what is an adventure? Well, an ad most people will think of an adventure as a long journey or a major disruption of normal life. Um, this is not wrong. It is technically true, but at the same time, adventure isn't exclusively that. Neither is the actual definition of an adventure. An adventure can be, you know, and, and again, sometimes uh, adventure is associated with adrenaline seeking, but this isn't the case either. Usually, adventure is out of the ordinary. It's something that you will experience uh, beyond uh, your usual state. It's certainly not something that you would experience on a day-to-day -day basis, because if it was day-to-day, -day, then it wouldn't be an adventure, right? Um, at least the way that we, you know, at least, you know, adventure is usually out of the ordinary. It's usually something that does disrupt the norm, but it's not necessarily a major disruption of the norm. Uh, usually... Uh, actually, especially an adventure will involve testing or pushing to the limit. Um, this is a big one. Adventure involves being tested. This is one reason why it's important for men. If you are a man and you have not gone on any kind of adventure, you need to really reevaluate your life because adventure is essential for growing up into manhood. Uh, you need adventure. Uh, this is uh, you need to be tested. You need to be pushed to your absolute limits. It's just like exercise, right? If you want to build muscle, you got to push your muscles to the limit. You want to build character. You want to build uh, real character. You got to push it to the limit, and that's what adventure does. Adventure puts you in the circumstances you need to really test you. Sometimes it's not to the absolute limit, right? Sometimes it's just a little bit here, a little bit there. A little adventure here, a little adventure there. That's okay. A little adventure is still an adventure. Sometimes we get little adventures. Sometimes we get big adventures. Whatever we have, adventure involves testing and being pushed to the limit. That doesn't always mean to the absolute limit, right? It doesn't mean necessarily an extreme push, but it is a push. And it does involve testing. Also, adventure involves the whole person. Of course, adventure will involve the physical person, right? This is something that's very important, and the physical person is often tested to the limits in an adventure. And of course, you know, you think of, for example, someone like my ancestor who ran away onto a ship. Well, you're going to be tested physically because you got to, you know, especially if you're a cabin boy, 
because uh, you got to be running around, you got to be doing all the things. You get, you know, you're gonna be cleaning, you're gonna be, you know, swabbing the deck and whatever all, right? You're gonna be doing hard, hard, hard physical labor. Now, of course, this is also the case if you're doing, uh, you know, another kind of adventure, right? Where you are. You know, you're going out on a long journey, right? The conventional adventure of running away and, you know, going on some epic quest, right? Well, you know, usually it involves some rock climbing, some, you know, lots of walking, um, lots of traveling. That's a big, you know, that's physical. That's a physical strain. Um, and so that's very, it is very important. But it doesn't just involve physical strain. Uh, it also involves mental strain, and this, of course, is also pretty evident. Um, in most cases, that phys that mental stress, that mental strain, mental testing and pushing to the limit—that's a big thing, because it's you know it's not just about your your body; it's also about your mind. This is a big thing. Now, again, not always to the absolute limit. It may not be extreme, but there is still testing involved, and relational. This is big too. This it there is the relational uh, adventure will also have an impact on your relationships. This is something that is also portrayed, but not often thought about uh, when people come home or throughout the adventure. Right, you have relationships developing and changing. You have uh, friends who are uh, maybe becoming closer friends or getting a better understanding of each other. You have, of course, romantic relationships that can develop. Uh, all sorts of things like that are commonly portrayed in conventional adventure. However, uh, it goes beyond that, right? Re because your relational self isn't just about how, you know, about other people. And it's, you know, there's also that connection with God, too. Uh, that also is a big part of it. And, of course, there's also your acknowledgement of yourself um, an understanding of yourself as a relational person, understanding your boundaries, understanding what's okay for you and what's not, understanding how to set those boundaries. That's a big part of adventure because, you know, that is a big thing. Mistakes are made along the way, and those mistakes, you know, whatever those mistakes are, shape how things go. And that's a big part of that test, right? An adventure is all about that. It's one of the big things with adventure. Now, how can we get real adventure in our lives? You know, we may not want adventure in the sense of, say, you know, something like, you know, the Lord of the Rings, right? Where you've got, you know, suddenly your life, your home, and everything that you ever known and cared about is, you know, threatened with a complete extermination or enslavement, and just everything is kind of coming down and crashing around your ears. You know, you know, uh, that's not really something that you'd want, right? But how can we get real adventure in our lives? How can we get adventure that's not something out of a video game, that's not something out of a movie or out of a fantastical book or other kind of thing, right, or other substitute? How can we get real adventure in our lives? Well, there's a bunch of ways. One of the biggest ones is try something new that's outside your comfort zone. Um, many people will say, ah, you know, skydiving, that's an adventure. Well, yeah, it is. Um, I'm not going to try it. Sure, it would be an adventure, but that's a little too far outside of my own personal comfort zone. Um, maybe someday I'll try it. I doubt it, but maybe, right? I guess I could. Uh, but scuba diving is something that's a little bit more up my alley. Now, there is an adventure. I've been scuba diving before, and let me tell you, it is fun. Sure, I was so skinny that I sank right to the bottom, but you know, hey, <laughs> I didn't need any extra gear for that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, trying things outside your comfort zone are really cool, and they should be fun, right? But they should be outside your comfort zone. Scuba diving is amazing. That's a great example. I love scuba diving. I wish I, I need to go get my license. Uh, I need to get my license renewed because uh, I would love to do that. It'd be so cool to go scuba diving again. Oh. I just thought about that. Um, and that is a great way, that is a great thing. I mean, you know, you think about it, you're plunging into an entirely different world. You're exercising, you're getting that physical strain. You're also, I mean, there's just so much involved. Scuba diving is awesome. It's fantastic, and I would really like to go again. Um, but it is really cool. And that's just one way, right, that, you know, that's just one example. But, you know, skydiving, scuba diving, uh, both involve diving. <laughs> uh, but other things, too. Camping. Even if something as simple as camping, if you've never been camping, go camping. 
Go backpacking, go hiking, if you've never done those things. Um, something that's outside your comfort zone could be something as simple as, you know, going up and talking to a new person. That could be easily outside your comfort zone. And now, let me tell you, there is no greater adventure than meeting new people. Yeah, uh, there's no greater adventure than that. I'm um, sure not everyone will agree, uh, will necessarily understand what I mean, but let me say I am an introvert and I absolutely um, uh, love meeting new people. I, uh, it takes energy out of me, but I still love meeting people, right? Because meeting new people means, hey, that's someone else that I get to learn about. For me, it's about discovery, it's about learning. Uh, that's one of the big, I forgot to mention that. I don't know why I didn't put it. Maybe it was for lack of room, but discovery is another big part of adventure. Learning. That's a big thing. That's, that's my major reason that why I love adventure because there's so many new things to see and to learn and to experience. That's so cool. Like, right, like there's so much out there that you, that, that you don't know. Learn about it. Experience it. If you've never been somewhere, if you've never done something, if you've never tried something, do it. Go there. Try that. See it. It's just, you know, that's so big. It's so important. Right? Try something outside your comfort zone. Sometimes we just want to break from routine. That's all we really need. Sometimes our needs are a little bit more complicated than that. And that's okay. But we do, you know, sometimes all we want is a break from the routine and so you could do something as simple as going out to a park or going you know going out to the mountains or wherever it is right if you have mountains in your area whatever right <clears throat> now speaking of that one of the best ways to get adventure is getting outdoors that's probably the single sorry single best way to get adventure is going outdoors. Now, <clears throat> when I say going outdoors, I don't mean to a park. Now, some people might think I'm, I'm a little crazy here, right? <clears throat> when you go to a park, now, now granted, some people don't have access to much else than a park. I understand that. But at the same time, <laughs> Is there really any situation where you don't have access to nature outside of a park? You could always go outside the city. A lot of people don't recognize that or realize that, but you know, you can go outside a city. You don't have to go to a park. And in fact, if you live in a city, a, a real metropolitan city, take the time to get out of the city. Not just, in, and not just to a park. Where nature is manicured, right? No. No, 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 no. You don't want that kind of nature. That's not the kind of nature. That's not the kind of outdoors I'm talking about. That's not adventurous. That's tame. That's orderly and safe. You're never going to get adventure in somewhere that's safe. <laughs> right. Go hiking. Go backpacking. Go dirt biking. Go bird watching. Go scuba diving. All those things are great ways. You know, free diving, even. Those are all examples of where's to, where to go. Now, I want to clarify something that I just said. Um, you're never going to get adventure where where you are absolutely safe. Obviously, make sure that you know safety should be a concern of yours. Please don't misunderstand me on that. Safety should be a big concern. Always look for safety and do your very best to main to be safe. You know, take safety equipment. First aid is a big thing, too. Make sure that you're aware of that. Make sure you know those things. Make sure you're able to get first aid in your area. If not, make sure you're able to, uh, to contact first aid as soon as you can, um, you know, as quickly as possible. Uh, make sure, of course, as well, that you are, uh, you know, especially if you're going on a hike or backpacking, make sure that you are marking your way so that you won't get lost. Uh, make sure that you won't be trying any poisonous plants, that you know what plants are poisonous and not. And if you don't know, then, you know, just don't eat it. Um, and if, you know, with water, of course, make sure you bring a water purifier, um, you know, water filter, something like that, as well as sterilizer. It's a big one. Uh, make sure that you are prepared for safety. You know, all that's important. But in a place where there is absolutely no risk, there is no adventure. 
If there is no risk, there is no adventure. If there is risk, there is always adventure. Right. So it's important to take those risks. It's important to go somewhere where there is risk involved. Risk is not evil. Risk is not bad. Sure, it's dangerous, but, you know, so is life. I mean, seriously. So, I mean, driving a car is dangerous. Goodness, some place, <laughs> some cities I've been in, let me tell you, driving there is an adventure. <laughs> um, but, at, you know, at the same time, right, we do have to recognize that safety is important, but risk is also important. Don't go somewhere that's beyond, you know, don't mess with a rattlesnake, you know, don't poke a rattlesnake, don't throw stones at a bee's nest, right? But you can walk where rattlesnakes might be. They might not be there too, but you don't know for sure. You know, if you, I mean, if you know that it's rattlesnake territory, then yeah, you might want to, you know, be careful. But you know, I, I wouldn't go there. But if you don't, you know, but if you're just in a general area where, sure, there might be rattlesnakes. Okay, go out. Um, oh, you know, sure, there might be. You know, there might be places where. You know, eh, there there could be some dangers here, but you know, it, no more than any other part of this area. Okay, well then you know, go there. Sure, there's one place I know that. Um, in fact, the other day it's relatively safe. It's along a bike trail here in my hometown, and uh, the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago, I was out just gathering herbs, and uh, lo and behold, on the side of the road, about five to ten feet off uh, off the road, actually it's probably closer to like seven feet or so away from the road, uh, or away from the trail was a rattlesnake. Now, the rattlesnake was curled up uh, with its head, now, not in a striking position, its head was buried in its coils, and it was sunning itself outside a burrow. And I went, oh, well, hello. <laughs> and I kept well away from it. There was risk there. I didn't even know that rattlesnakes were in that part of the area, but it's a well-walked area. You know, I did warn people who had children who were coming after, hey, you know, there's a rattlesnake here, be careful. Um... But at the same time, right, is it, un you know, is it rational or reasonable for me to avoid that area exclusively because I saw a rattlesnake there once? No, absolutely not. I've been going there for years, never saw a rattlesnake before. It's not rational for me to avoid just because there's the possibility that maybe possibly there may be a rattlesnake who may possibly, possibly get angry. You know, that kind of a risk assessment and avoidance is not healthy, okay? Um, it's just not, because by and large, rattlesnakes, you know, if you, if you respect them, they'll respect you. That's the way it is with nature in general. Uh, and so, you know, be respectful of nature and you'll be respected back. Um, now I personally really like going on an off trail hike. Now, obviously there are things that you should do. There's precautions you should take. But at the same time, that's what I really like, is going off the trail and just wandering around and experiencing nature like you wouldn't ever see it on a trail or in a park. Going off trail is amazing. You find all sorts of things, uh, and you experience all sorts of nature. I've seen things that are um, incredible, everything from rattlesnakes, although that one admittedly was on trail, um, to king snakes that I've seen under rocks. I've seen wild cows. Well, I say wild formerly domesticated, now wild cows. Um, although some of those have also been on trail. Uh, I've seen uh, I've seen and heard tree frogs. I've watched some of the most poisonous salamanders in the world um, just swimming along in a creek. Uh, I have seen rabbits and, uh, well, I've seen cottontails and... Uh, Roadrunners and lizards and bob... Have I seen bob... No, I haven't seen... I haven't seen any big predators, thankfully. <laughs> uh, other than the rattlesnake, which was... that was, It was a large rattlesnake. It must have been five or six feet long. It was a big fella. Um, I've seen all sorts of things that you would never see if you stayed on trail. So, you know, obviously be wise, be safe, right? But, you know, take precautions... But don't, you know, but at the same time, go off trail. You'll see amazing things. I remember I hiked up one mountain, right? Um, I probably climbed two or 3,000 feet in the space of an hour. Uh, now, that may not be amazing to some of you who are more athletic than me. 
Uh, but one of the reasons I was able to do that... Well, actually, was it two or 3,000 feet, or was it higher than that? It may have been higher than that, I forget. Um, but it was this big old mountain, and I climbed it in a space of about an hour, hour and a half. How? I didn't go on the trail. I just hiked straight up the mountainside. So where the trail was spiraling up like this, I just went straight up. And um, it was tiring, yeah, sure. I had a doctor's appointment straight after that. They were like, wow, you've got a really healthy heartbeat. I said, well, yeah, I just got out of a, just finished hiking. I had a pulse of like 52. Wow, you got a really strong heart. Good. <laughs> I hope so. I just came back from a big old long hike. Oh yeah, well that'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, but that it's such a cool experience. You'll never experience nature that way otherwise. I've seen flowers that are extremely rare. I've seen wild California roses. I've seen all sorts of things. It's really, really cool. Um, mission trips are also a good thing. They're not for everyone, though. Uh, if you're a Christian, a mission trip is really cool, but it's not for everybody. Sure, maybe everyone can take one in their lifetime. Probably everyone should, but they're not for everyone, right? And being a missionary in a foreign country or in another place is not... It's not for everyone. We're all called to be missionaries, but just not always in foreign countries, right? Now... Why is adventure so important to us? Well, the short answer is because God made us that way. So, you know, we're, and that's kind of the answer that we were looking at before, but why? Why is adventure so important to us? Why? Why is it so important? Well, the long answer is because God is a God of adventure. And adventure is one of the tools that he uses to grow us and even to communicate with us. It's really, really important, and honestly, it's amazing. So think about it. Yeah, and especially when we're talking about nature, right? Nature testifies to God in all of his aspects. And especially when we have adventure in nature, it reveals the untamed and wild aspects of God's character. Now, some people may be going, wait, 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 wait. God is untamed and wild? No, 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 no. I don't like that idea. And I can understand why. Our culture, and especially the kind of Christianity that uh, has been taught during the past couple hundred years, um, is a very sterilized form of Christianity. When we look at God today, especially over the past 150 years, we see, uh, we are told, right, that God is safe that he is merciful and loving. And these are, you know, that is true. God is merciful and loving. But God is also more than that. God is untamed. He is undomesticated. He is primal. He is wild. That does not mean, right, I want to be very clear, untamed does not mean disorganized, and wild does not mean unreliable or, uh, or mean or cruel. There are a few things that, uh, you know, I've, I've seen places where people will say, well, God is dangerous because nature is dangerous. Well, a lot of the things that we have today that are dangerous, in fact, everything that we have today that's dangerous, the wild, rocky crags, the, um, you know, the dangerous animals, the dangerous plants, things like that, um, those, you know, the, the giant chasms, you know, the scores in the surface of the earth, those are not things that were originally there. Those were things that were that happened as a result of the Noahic flood, right? Those are things, you know, that was an absolutely catastrophic event that completely transformed and shaped the surface of the earth. Um, for those of you who don't know, you know, I mean, let me put it this way. Noah's flood was not a gentle rising of the, you know, gentle filling of the bathtub. <laughs> this was an absolutely cataclysmic geothermal volcanic event uh, that encompassed the entire globe. The entire surface of the earth was basically completely shattered. Um, there was a game that I used to play where... Um, they had... And it was, a, it was a game... It's a game that's still very popular. I'm not going to mention the exact name of it. But... 
back when I was a gamer, I used to play this game, and it was an online game that you would play with a bunch of people. And uh, the particular story of the time period that I entered the game in was that something enormous had happened, right, where the entire surface of the Earth, uh, or, well, not of the Earth, but of the, of the planet, right, had been completely transformed and changed. And, you know, now, the whole purpose of that, right, was to change the appearance and whatnot so that there would be a new and fresh gameplay for people. Um, if you know what I'm talking about, then you'll understand what I'm saying here. You know, you'll understand kind of what I'm saying, what game I'm talking about, and whatnot. But the reason I bring it up is that what happened in that world, if you're familiar with that, where there was this massive upheaval and the, you know, the bad guy basically created a, a whole different, you know, the world looked totally different, right? Um, and, you know, he reshaped the, the surface of, of that planet. Um, and, yeah, changed the climate and all sorts of things. Um, that's what the flood did. <laughs> um, it wasn't a nice, nice, you know, ah, well, you know, let me put, just put the plug in the drain and let the water rise. No, this was where the entire surface of the planet is shaking and quaking and there's, you know, all sorts of nasty things, you know, volcanoes are erupting, magma is coming out, water is pouring and gushing out in, in huge geysers, cataracts of water pouring down from the sky at the same time. In fact, probably the entire uh, sky would have appeared to have just completely vibrated and now it, it was just this incredible event right nature the way that we see it today is not the way it was designed by god nature was not as dangerous then as it is now however that being said danger and wild don't necessarily don't mean the same thing wild and untamed doesn't mean dangerous it just means wild and untamed and so it's really important for us to recognize that uh, and that God is untamed and wild. God is not domesticated. We do not do anything to God. God does these things because he wants to. He helps us out. He gives us, you know, he gives us blessings and, and love and pours out his mercy and affection for us uh, and sent his own son to die for us because he wanted to, not because we did anything special or because we, you know, earned anything or uh, because you know it was because it pleased him to do so <laughs> it was his desire to do so it was his will it, he wanted to do it and so you know we can't make god want to do anything god is his own person god is his own entity right and therefore he's untamed right god is untamed god is wild and we can only really understand that and experience that if we go out into nature that is untamed and wild. And that is where we will come in contact with God in his fullness. And it's incredible. If you've never experienced it, you will have no idea what I mean. But if you've experienced it, you know exactly what I mean. Now, of course, many people will ask, is God really a God of adventure? I mean, this sounds like some gimmick that a youth pastor might preach to, to youth. And be like, oh, yeah, God's a God of adventure, so go out and live your everyday lives like an adventure. No, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Um, it sounds gimmicky, but let me ask you a question here. Does God ever call his people into safe situations? Totally safe situations. Well, yes and no. Yes, because wherever we are called into, we are safe. Sort of. But think about this. Abraham. Abraham was called from his homeland to travel to a land that he had never seen and he didn't have anybody that he knew or anybody he was related to living there. In fact, he was to leave all his relatives behind. In fact, on top of that, the land that he'd never seen was full of people who were intensely warlike and constantly fighting. Yeah, sure. Safe. Uh-huh. Yeah. In fact, it was so safe that Abraham ended up having, you know, that Abraham's one relative that came with him, his nephew, ended up getting kidnapped along with a bunch, you know, well, captured, imprisoned by an invading army, and Abraham had to go out and fight and defeat them. Yeah. Safe. <laughs> now, granted, God was with him, right? 
And so wherever God is, you're safe, right? Wherever God is, you're safe. But, you know, let's, let's continue. What about the Israelites? Well, the Israelites were called from Egypt, which admittedly wasn't a terribly safe place, but they were also called to Egypt in the first place. Uh, but they were enslaved in Egypt, so, you know, that wasn't a good situation. They were enslaved. Now, that wasn't safe by any means. Um, and so God did call them out from Egypt into the wilderness, and in fact, he took the long way. You see, if you really wanted to, right, if re God really had intended to, he could have taken the Israelites to Canaan in a matter of a couple of weeks. <coughs> and that would have been that, right? If he had wanted to lead them straight to Canaan, then he could have just taken them along the border of the, of the, uh, the Mediterranean Sea and just taken them right up a couple of weeks. In fact, maybe even a couple of days. Well, a couple of weeks, because I would say because of probably because of just the amount of people that were traveling. You know, just an individual person, probably a couple, you know, maybe a few days, maybe a week. Um, but once you add a bunch of people, it takes forever, right? It multiplies the, the time by quite a bit. And uh, God didn't do that. God took them down into the heart of the desert and wandered there for a year. In fact, over a year. And then he sent them up to Canaan, and then they doubted him and everything else, and... He, you know, they wandered for another 38 years in the wilderness. Sure, you know, whatever. So, you know, yeah, wilderness, safe. And we know the wilderness was actually not that safe because there were a bunch of fiery serpents living there along with other insects and everything else. And on top of that, you know, the water was a whole problem. Food was a problem. Um, we know that if they hadn't had God with them, their clothes would have also been a problem. Um... Their sandals, of course, would have been a problem. Yeah, and of course, heat and you know heat and cold, you know, and cool, you know, temperature regulation. That was also a big thing that they would have that they needed help with because the pillar of fire keeping them warm and giving them light, and the pillar of cloud keeping them cool by day. So, yeah, they had a lot of help. It wasn't a safe situation. God was with them, but it wasn't safe. And uh, then, you know, God takes them into a land, you know, out of the wilderness, which was a dangerous place, into a land that, yeah, was, you know, flowing with milk and honey, but also swarming with enemies, right? With enemies who all hated them and wanted them gone or were terrified of them. Yeah, safe. <laughs> but now let's get more serious here. What about the prophets, the people who followed God, right? The people who had special messages for God, God's people. What about them? Well, all prophets were called to give testimony in dangerous circumstances, usually to people who just simply did not want to hear what they had to say. Many people lost their lives as a result. Many of the prophets, in fact, most of them, were killed, not died, killed as a result of the ministry that God asked them to do. Yeah, safe. All right. What about Christians? What about us Christians? All Christians are called to testify for, before a godless world even when our lives are at risk. All Christians. We are called to testify before a world whose natural state is enmity with God. In fact, the natural state of the world is so at odds with God that when God showed up, the world killed him. Yeah. And we're his followers and we're supposed to say the same things. If God himself came and we killed him, right? Then when, now, now that we've repented, right? And we're saying these things and we're going to say the same things that he said and be the same thing that he was, they killed him. What are they going to do to us? God never sends his people places that are safe. He sends them where he is. And where God is, there is refuge, but not necessarily safety. God has people who have died in his service. God does not always protect people's lives if it does not benefit the long-term goal. 
If you want to know more about that, I would strongly encourage you to check out the book Martyr's Mirror. It is a fantastic book that records the, the uh, struggles of Christian folk from the days of the apostles all the way up until the 17th century. These people who stood up for God, who testified for God, and who sealed their testimony with their blood. God never sends his people where things are totally safe, where there is risk. And that's adventure, isn't it? God is a God of adventure. Now, what adventure is God calling you to have? You know, I have an ancestor, as I mentioned, who went off sailing. He ran away from home, got on a ship, and sailed away to a land completely foreign. Ended up in China at one point, and uh, things were, how shall I say it, things were not exactly the most safe. In fact, he died young, well, relatively young. He died in his 50s, 52. He was outlived by, his, uh, by I believe, both of his wives. No, no, one of his wives died in childbirth. His first wife died in childbirth. His second wife, I think, also died young. And his third wife outlived him. And, yeah. <laughs> um, he also, you know, went, returned back to his homeland only a couple of times. And never... Well, we don't have any idea who's related to us. Um, we're Dutch, but we don't know really any connection to the Netherlands. We, we haven't found anything. So, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, that's the, the cost of adventure. Adventure is in my blood. Travel and, and discovery and those things are in my blood. That's something that's a, a part and parcel of who I am. And in fact, um, we didn't stay in Malacca. We didn't stay in Malaysia. We hopped it on down to Australia. We are, you know, we're in New Zealand. And somehow we even have, rel you know, I even have relatives in South America, have relatives all over the United States and even in Europe, uh, in, uh, in the UK. Uh, we have them in Canada. Basically, we have relatives everywhere except where we came from. Which is funny, to me at least. You never know where adventure will take you. You never know where God is going to take you. You never know how you know what God is calling you to. You never do. Some may be called to do mission work in dangerous fields. Uh, some may be called to go abroad. I myself feel that I am called to minister abroad, not in a third world country, but in a first world country. Um, in fact, in many first world countries. I feel that I am called to that, and the field that I am going to be going into is dangerous. You wouldn't think so in a first world country, but it is. And so it is very important for us to, you know, to recognize that, you know, some are called to that. Sometimes dangerous fields are the fields here at home, too. There's places in the United States that it's not really a safe place to witness, but you need to do it anyway. Some people may, like Jonah, be called to go to places where people are openly hostile to Christianity, to, the, to, you know, to who God is. Some people may be called to do that. Some people, some people may just be called to experience adventure in their day-to-day -day lives. This is, you know, some, you know, some people may not like that. <laughs> some people may be constantly wishing for something new, for something different, something out of the ordinary, something extraordinary, when God may never be calling them to that. And it's, you know, and we should experience that adventure in our day-to-day -day lives. But God is calling everyone to spend time in primal, untamed nature, in communion with nature's God. Everyone is called to do that. And so the question is, how will you answer the call to adventure? How will you answer it? 
What call is God putting on your life? Is he asking you to spend time in mission work? Is he asking you to spend time raising a family? Now there's an adventure that's the greatest adventure of all. Is he asking you to spend uh, to have an adventure in spreading the gospel in a way that's unique, in a way that's uh, especially laid out for you? Is God asking you to dedicate your life to the spreading of the gospel uh, in, a, uh, in an exclusive way, to make that your life work? Not just uh, your Christian calling and your Christian duty, but actually how you make a living. Or maybe God is calling you to just do a normal job, a nine-to-five Maybe blue collar, maybe white collar. <clears throat> and that's how you spread the gospel. Maybe. But God is always calling us to spend time with him in nature and in his word. And I would strongly encourage you, if you have not spent time in untamed nature, in primal nature, in communion with the God of nature, the primal and untamed God. The one who is described as being a man of war. The one who is described as trotting upon the, uh, upon the corpses of his enemies, their blood staining his clothes. The one who says, uh, the one of whom it is said, he commanded now, he, he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The one who made the mountains with a flick of his hand, with just a word from his mouth, who caused the seas to tremble, the earth to quake, and the fountains of the great deep to burst open, and the fountains in the sky to pour down their load that drowned the earth and the wicked inhabitants thereof. The God who sent his own Son in mercy and in grace and in pleading to the fallen humanity, uh, to fallen humanity. The God who begs and pleads and gives opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Who says, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We are all called to spend time with that, with him in nature, to have that hour of communion, quiet communion, with him, with nature, and with our own hearts. How will you answer the call? If you have any questions about today, about tonight, I should say, uh, or if you want to know more, if you want to know maybe more about how to uh, find places to, to hike or to go, I'm lucky I live in a place that's very, very uh, full of nature and, and has lots of biodiversity. I'm lucky. I got mountains, I got plains, I got deserts, I got everything. All the ocean, swamps, wetlands, everything all within a couple hours drive. The only thing I don't have is tundra. And I wish I had that. <laughs> oh, I would run to that in the summertime. Let me tell you, hit the 90s this last week. Ugh. Not ready for that. Or the 30s for those of you who are who are used Celsius. If you want to know anything like that or uh, those sorts of a thing, then please do contact me. I'll be more than happy to help you. Um... And I'm sure there's plenty of resources in your local areas as well. Um, there's probably bird watching societies or other things like that. That's a great way. Those are great places to, uh, great things to find. The Audubon Society, um, all those sorts of things. And of course, spend time in God's Word. If you have any questions about the study aspect of things, if you have any questions about the Bible, about the texts presented tonight, or about the principles contained in the, that I've presented, then please do uh, contact me, send me a, a PM, uh, or and uh, anything like that, send me a DM, and uh, I would be more than happy to, uh, yeah, more than happy to, to talk to you about that. Anyway, I know this was a little bit of a deviation from our usual Mondays, 
Um, but it is part of our health, and it's very important. Anyway, that being said, uh, if there are any questions, please go ahead and type them out now, um, and uh, I'll be answering them. Once again, I'm hoping that I will be able to do some more stuff. I'm really planning on it. Um, with this new camera that I'm getting. I'm really excited about that. Um, also, please do be aware that my time as doing presentations on Sabbaths on Saturdays is limited. Uh, we are discontinuing that. Um, we may move, I'll probably move the Bardic sessions, uh, the music to another day. Uh, the studies, I'll probably stop those. And in favor of uh, videos that do studies instead. Um, that will probably be where I end up going. So, uh, please be aware of that, that that is coming up. But you will be seeing more content. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get some stuff out there uh, on herb collection, on wild crafting, on sustainable and ethical wild crafting, because that's a big thing. Um, so please do, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. I am still thinking about those sanctuary study videos. Uh, I am definitely looking at that. So, uh, pl that is also something that is coming down the pike. Um, and I'm hoping that I will have some more time now that I'm going to be getting, things are going to be getting back to normal. That being said, uh, it doesn't look like there are any questions and it is a little late. I apologize for going later. So we're going to go ahead and end things here. Uh, so let's go ahead and close out with a word of prayer, and I will see you guys this upcoming Sabbath on Saturday at 10 o'clock for our sacred history. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your love, your kindness, and uh, that you were a God of adventure, that you call us out of our comfort zones, and that you call us out of the place of our... Uh, of our... how shall I say it, Lord... Uh, you call us out of the place where we are, yes, comfortable, uh, to a place where you were able to take us and test us and, and work us and change us into your image. Thank you so much, Lord, uh, for being willing to work with us in our complacency. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, and that you are willing to draw us out and work in us. Please keep us, Lord, until we should meet again. Draw us ever closer and closer to you. Uh, and... May we be conduits and witnesses of you wherever we go and who, uh, with who, everyone that we meet. Thank you so much again. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Alrighty, thank you very much once again, everybody. I'm really, really grateful to everyone who's here, and I hope to see you guys all on this upcoming Sabbath. Again, that's 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, so please 